Apparently, bacteria have started to become resistant to antibiotics. So I guess no more sewer diving for me. Antibiotic resistance is scary. When bacteria stop responding to antibiotics, diseases that used to be easily treatable can become deadly. Each year in the United States alone, at least 23,000 people get infected and die from antibiotic resistant bacteria. On previous episodes of DNews, we've talked about some of the most threatening types, including certain strains of E. coli, MRSA, which causes staph infections, and gonorrhea. Yes, gonorrhea is becoming resistant to medications. Clearly, antibiotic resistance is a huge problem. So scientists have been seeking out better, more effective treatments to deal with bacteria that are already resistant. To dive into this story, DNews teamed up with our friends at Seeker Stories to look for treatment solutions where we least expect them, the bottom of the ocean. Off the coast of California, scientists from UC Santa Cruz are scouring the ocean for what they hope is the key to fighting a new breed of drug-resistant superbugs. So we're out here in Monterey Bay looking for the next potential medical breakthrough, but how are we going to do that? So uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, make our scuba dive and collect the samples. And so we're going to take this ring down there and we're going to make pairs of duplicate samples uh, during the dive uh, in as many discrete locations as we can um, and then take these samples back to the lab uh, for workup. And how cold is the water? Oh, the water's 55. So You've uh, got a dry suit. I got my dry fed. suit. You got your wet suit. We'll see how we fare. <laughs> So there hasn't been a new antibiotic developed in about 20 years, um, and the rate of resistance to existing antibiotics in hospitals can run upwards of 40 to 60 percent. Given that it takes about 15 years to bring a drug to market, there is a real pressing crisis in the antibiotic discovery arena. According to the CDC, at least 2 million people in the U.S. become infected with drug-resistant bacteria, and at least 23,000 die each year as a result of these infections. You say it's a crisis. I mean, if you had to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, where are we at on the antibiotic crisis? 11. It's very serious. We are about to return to a pre-antibiotic era where even basic surgeries and other medical procedures can lead to death by septicemia and other um, untreatable bacterial pathogens. The history of antibiotics is relatively short. In 1928, Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin capable of killing bacteria. Scientists Howard Florey and Ernest Chain then mass-produced it in time for use on Allied forces during World War II, the first example in which more soldiers died in battle than from infection. It drastically changed the world of modern medicine and extended the average human lifespan significantly. Not many more antibiotics have been developed since then. Now, why has the discovery of new antibiotics kind of fallen by the wayside for the past 30 or 40 years? Developing new antibiotics is not the most effective way uh, to, to make a steady profit. If you make a new drug for um, asthma or diabetes, that's a drug which patients will take likely every day for the rest of their lives. Mm. So from an economic perspective, drug companies don't have much incentive to develop new antibiotic drugs. As Fleming accepted his Nobel Prize in 1945, he warned that the misuse and overuse of antibiotics could result in drug-resistant bacteria. And he was right. If you put antibiotics into uh, heavy use, then eventually bacteria will find a way to become resistant to those drugs. It hasn't been helped by the poor use of antibiotics for uh, people with flu-like symptoms. If you have a viral infection, antibiotics don't help. And the more you take antibiotics, the more you are helping to sort of build that pool of resistant strains. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf, like if you cry wolf all the time and then we actually have a wolf, then it doesn't work. Right, exactly. It's a combination of factors that have, that have led to this. Roger's team of divers collect sand from the seafloor a relatively understudied environment for medical research, but one that is rich with unknown chemistry. These scientists hope that the microbes within the sand will lead to new and powerful drugs to fight bacteria. However, the search area is very large and it may take years to determine if these samples hold a cure. So let's see, let's see the samples. Okay, so here, here we are. So this is uh, what we managed to get on this dive. And although they may look pretty similar to the naked eye, at the microbial level, every one of these is a, is a completely different uh, uh, population. And it's just, I mean, it's literally just sand. It's just sand. So this is very low impact uh, science on the environment, but the, the potential applications are huge. So what, what happens next is we'll take the sand, put it on petri dishes, and allow those microorganisms to grow. Mm -hmm. 
um, and then our, our microbiologist will look at those and select specific species for study for their chemistry. So this could come from this? Absolutely. It's possible that the microorganisms in this sample may one day make compounds which we can add to tablets like this to treat diseases including malaria uh, and, and of course uh, antibiotics. That's yeah. amazing. The cure to what we're looking for could be anywhere, in the ocean, in the mountains, in the sky. Right. And if you tried to do that discovery in a random way, where you went into the environment and picked microorganisms at random, you would fail. There are many millions of sequences that we have not yet investigated. Deciding how to do that in an ordered way is the challenge for the next generation of natural product scientists. Misusing antibiotics can lead to drug resistance and disease, as it did for Ryan Schneider. He was diagnosed with C. diff and tried a revolutionary treatment in this episode of Secret Stories. Check it out here. Did you feel weird about having somebody else's fecal material put into your body? Uh, it was weird at first, but that I don't even think about that at all anymore. Because the way I feel now is weird. I, I want to feel back to normal. I don't, I don't really care what it takes to, to get that. I just want to feel normal again. So what do you think? Are you worried about resistant bacteria? Let us know down below in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to DNews as well as Seeker Stories for more videos.